Welcome to another teacher tip with Mr. Long and this is part three of our workbook series. In part one we basically laid out how we want our markbook to look. We set up the names of the students, their groupings and all the different assessments and their values and um, what their weightings are going to be. That's what we did in the first part. In the second part we did formulas, for example, over here, these formulas to work out what the percentage is for each assessment. I've gone and put random numbers in for the actual assessments. And our formulas from the last video are calculating the percentages for each of the assessments and years of the total. And then we also included an overall uh, mark, or the final mark, which is a combination of all these assessments based on the weighting. So that's what we did in the last video on calculations. In this video, part three, we're going to look at how we can add summaries to give us extra information about the assessments and what the overall uh, students' performance are, do, how they're doing, for example, symbol distributions and things like that. So let's start off at the bottom here. I like to do something for all of the assessments. So the, the main ones that I like to do, I like to find, have a count, I like to have an average, I like to have a min value and a max value. And you can put a sum if you want, although the sum doesn't always help you. But if you want to have a sum, you can. You get the idea. So those are the values that I want to have at the bottom. So I'm going to start off here and say equals count. Now this is going to count all of the numbers to see that I've got the right number of students. Maybe I've missed one. So I'm just going to count and then drag my mouse over all of those values. And I'm just going to do that for the first one. So I'll show you again, count, and then you drag your mouse over the values. Don't include the total at the top, just the values of the students. So there are 15 students in this class. I'm going to center it, and what's nice is all I have to do is drag this all the way across. I'm going to go even over to my total, even though this row means nothing. I'm just going to delete all that, that random row there. So there I've got a nice little... Uh, summary that's going across there of how many students. So if I've left out a mark, it will be very clear that one of them will not be a 15. Then I'm going to work out the average. So I'm going to say equals average, open bracket, and then the first block right up to the first, this, the first block to the last block of the student's marks, but just the first assessment. So there is the average mark, which you can round or make a particular number of decimal places using this over here so i'm going to make it up to there and then you can drag it across now there's this is going to be a little bit more tricky so just watch these spe special tricks with this one so i'm going to drag it all the way across again okay so i'll delete that random bit there now these are things that you've got to take note of whenever you got your percentage row that you ideally want to make a percentage if you click on those percentage rows wherever you've got a percent at the top here those ones should be percentages. If you make them percentages, that gives you a lot better information. Now, now that works fine over there. So the average mark for this assessment was 31.1 .1 out of 50, which is 62%. And so when you get to this type of scenario where you, we did a, an exam and we did each individual section of the exam and this is the actual mark from the exam. Now, when I get to this part, so obviously that is the percentage, that's the average, there we go. Now, this information isn't, it's nice to know what the average is, but I would like to know like a little bit more information. When I've got this situation, what I try to do here is I actually take that average, which is 6.3 out of 10, I'm actually going to divide it by whatever this total block is at the top for that question. For just when you've got, for example, individual breakdowns of an assessment. Not for individual assessments, but yeah, we've got each individual question. Now, by doing that, okay, I've taken the average of all the values, exactly like we've done before, but in this case, I'm just also including a divide that average by what the total of that question is. And then I'm going to make that into a percentage there. So I know that this question, because that six might not tell me enough information, but now I can see that 63% um, for this question, which means that's what they're getting on average for that question. And then I drag that one, but just for these questions individual questions of the assessment if i drag that across then that gives me a quite a bit of nice information for this assessment there i can see 
which question is the worst answered and there you can see question two that one's the worst answered and that first question is the best answered and so on so that gives you a lot better information when you're dealing with individual parts of an assessment see we don't need to do that here because we were working out the the, the total the average for the mark and next to it was the average for that total where here we don't have that breakdown so the average as a percentage is more useful to me in this case so you can do that so the average of all the cells and then when you get to individual um, questions of an assessment you can just do the average divided by the total value that's adopted if i change that that's actually assessment out of 11 all of this will change appropriately and then there is another one that should also be a percentage so that there we go the average at the moment is 59 percent for this class these are all random numbers, by the way, so that's why it says like that. Okay, the min equals to the min, the minimum mark that was achieved of all of these students for this assessment, close brackets, and again, we're going to, so 15 was the lowest mark, and then we can drag it across all the way, and there we go. So you can get that basic idea. Again, here, these are percentages, so all of these, I'm pressing control and selecting all the percentage values, and I'm just going to click on percentage one and that place that all change the percentage. Yeah, you can see it's two out of 10. If you want to make that a percentage, then you just apply the same idea. Yeah, if you want to find what the minimum percentage is, you would say min of that divided by whatever the total is, if you want that. But I think the average is good enough over there. That's good enough information. And then the max is very similar, equals max of all the values. Open and close brackets, and then we're going to center that as well. So someone got 49 out of 50, and we're going to drag that all the way across. Delete this random block here. And now remember, all the percentages, that one, I'm pressing control, that one, that one, that one, and those two. Those are all percentage columns. We'll make that percentage. So someone got 100% for this assessment, but someone also got 22%. So you get the idea. You can see the range of all this, the, the marks and stuff like that. So the marks range from 6 to 20 in that case. Okay, so that's what we can do. And you can make that all look very nice and pretty by formatting it and so on. So that gives you nice. Any other stats you can also do at the bottom here. So th those are the ones I like to use. It gives me a lot of information. If I've missed any assessments, what the average is for the different assessments, and the range of marks from the lowest to the highest. So I've gone ahead and just made it a little bit more colorful so you can use it to easily read the different uh, assessments. It's easier to follow the lines across and so on. So you can obviously use the color schemes that you want. Okay, now the next uh, summary that we're going to add, the last one, is some sort of symbol distribution. Now that is obviously dependent on how you do your symbols and so on. So over here, what I've got is you might have something like an A, a B, a C, or a D, and those are normally the values that we use. Um, in South Africa, we actually have a scale from seven down to actually one. So these actually, it's a seven point scale. So you can do something like that as well. So we want to do a nice little symbol distribution. The, here is where the, the calculations can get quite complicated. So you need to stick with me about how we're going to do these. So let's give it a go. So first of all, I don't want to have a symbol distribution for both the total and the percentages, the same information. So what I'm going to do to make my life a lot easier is I'm actually going to merge those two cells so that I get the the value for how many people obtained an A or a 7 for this assessment. I don't need to do it for each individual mark and percentage. It's all pretty much the same thing. Okay, so I've done that and I've copied it down so that they're all merged below it. So there we go. So this is going to contain how many people got a 7 or an A, and then this block will be how many people got a 6 or a B for this assessment and so on. So I'm going to teach you a formula that there is a, probably a better way to do the formula for all of them, but I'm going to teach you one formula so you just need to know one of them and you can apply it for every single scenario so hopefully it'll make sense whether you know excel or not so if you know mathematically better ways then you can use them but i'm going to teach you one formula to try to work out for all of these so let's have a look so it's going to be called a count ifs so count ifs so you see the form equals count ifs there's an s at the end because we're doing multiple criteria so this is what you do you need the criteria range i mean the range and then the criteria, then the range, the criteria. So it's always the range first, then the criteria. So the first thing we need to do, we are always referring to the percentage. So my range will always be the percentage of that assessment. Okay. 
do we see what we did there okay so now i'm going to press so th there we go that's the first one i'm going to now press a comma so i can get to the criteria so once i've got to the criteria now what do i want this to be for the seven it must be above 80. now we're dealing with percentages so 80 is not the number 80 it's 80 divided by 100 which is 0.8 so in double quotes remember that your criteria must be in double quotes so there's my double quotes oh no still want to be inside the formula so double quotes i'm going to say greater than equal to because an 80 percent is also an a that is my first criteria look in that block for all the cells that are greater than or equal to 0 0.8 which is 80 percent comma now i've got another range and another criteria now i know we're not going to get anything above 100 but let's keep doing it we select the exact same range exact same range 7 to 21 7 to 21 now this criteria is the upper limit so we want to go above 80 percent but we want to be less than so in double quotes remember our formula our criteria must be inside the double quotes must be less than and we will include a hundred percent now what's a hundred percent well if 0 0.8 is 80 percent then 100 percent would be a one okay so that is my formula for the a category from a from 80 percent to 100 if we look here there is one two three four five that i can see that i've got an a and there you can see our eight our five a's or sevens so let's try that formula again now what you can literally do is we can go and you know i'm just going to copy this and i'm just going to go and paste it now no, don't copy using that copy the formula like it is because we want to keep those those cells like they are i'm going to paste it here paste this formula so it's exact the same cell range and and for this range we want 70 to 79 so we want it to be greater than but including a 0.7 which is a 70 but we want it to be less than 79 but what happens if they get 79.5 so how do you know well this is the best way that i would recommend you want to go less than the the number of the the top number or the lowest number from the previous section so less than a 0 0.8 so if it's greater than 70 including 70 and just before an 80 percent then that would be in the b range yeah so i said these formulas are quite complicated but we can get there so there you can see there was a 70 there's no other 70s and then you can copy that formula again now that one is quite nice because from this point on i'm just copy and pasting it and therefore over here it's i'm going from 60 so 0 0.6 up until just before the 70 of the top so 0 0.7 so as you see you can get those formulas and there you should there should are no 60s according to this list i don't see any 60s oh, no 60s and then you go and you can keep just pasting that formula now we're doing the 50 so 0 0.5 up until 0 0.6 and we can come here and paste again. Now we're doing 0 0.4 until 0 0.5. Paste the formula. And now we're going 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. And then this one is from 0 until just before. So let's paste. So we are going from basically from 0 until just before 0 0.3 for the last level so there we go so there we go there we got our different levels so no one got below 30 percent for that assessment so there we go you can see our symbol distribution so there should be 15 students so if say five six yeah there are definitely 15 values there so that is our symbol distribution for that one assessment so what's great about our formulas if you double check the count ifs the range of the first assessment and then it's greater than 0 0.8 and then the range again less than one and then that exact same formula no, no numbers have changed except for our range now if you've done that correctly then the last part is i just have to copy this across see now it's already working for each of the individual assessments now this is a bit of a gap i'm not too worried about the distribution for each individual one so i'm literally just going to copy that and paste in the first block there the formula there 
there's no A's in this assessment, which makes sense because the highest mark was 74. And then over here, I'm going to paste again. And so there we go. We've got one A in that. And you can do that for all of them. You just copy them all across. And then you can make another copy and then paste them over here for that. So once your formula is correct, you can just copy and paste them all across and they should work appropriately for all of them. So I'm going to go do that so long and then make it look a little bit pretty. So I went and redid um, all the formulas. I just copied them across. I actually just selected the all like that and copied them across. And then I made it look a little bit pretty. I don't actually need this anymore. I can delete that. So there we go. So there's a nice little layout. So you can see our mark book is taking shape. There's our nice little details over there. Um, you've got all your marks over there. You've got a nice little summary over here. You can even do a chart of those, which we'll do in our next video. We will do some, some features that we'll add to our spreadsheet. Um, a little thing that I do like to do, a little tip, um, because especially if you've got lots of assessments, just take all these headings that you've got on this side. I'm actually just going to copy them. And then I'm going to paste them on this side so that I can see them a little bit easier on this side and make them like that. So just makes life a little bit easier when you're trying to read the data. So if you want to say, oh, what is this? You don't have to go all the way there. You can see, oh, there's a nice, that's the count, it's the average. So there we go. That's a nice little layout. Okay. So next video, we'll look at the extra features that we can add. But at the moment, we've got a fully functional mark book at the moment, which does all our marks, does all our percentages, does our totaling based on our weightings, and basically gives us some nice stats at the end. So hope this has been useful. The link to a copy of the spreadsheet is in the video description. So go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Look out for part four. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.